plaintiff, Rukia McMiller, says the defendant is her mother. And growing up, she was abusive. Rukia claims the defendant not only beat her with a water hose, but she also regularly beat her with her hands. She's suing her mother for unreturned property. Defendant Victoria Wells and her daughter Anita Williams admit that Victoria beat Rukia, but says it didn't do any good because Rukia is still disrespectful and vindictive. Victoria's countersuing for the balance due on a car and emotional distress. Start with you. Okay, growing up, uh, my mother was very abusive. She used to beat me with a water hose. I used to get the switch. How old was, how many years ago was that? What years? I was um, 15, 16, 17. And you don't know what years those are? 1998. Okay, that's 99. what I'm trying to find out the era. Okay. Because during the 60s and 70s, it was common, particularly for African-American households. Your mother, you interpreted it as abusive. She probably feels it was an acceptable uh, approach to discipline because that's what she probably experienced as a child. Um, and that's the case with a lot of folks now, particularly in the older generation. They say, okay, my mom used to do it to me, so ain't nothing wrong with doing it to my kids. Yes, it is. Shouldn't do it. Interpreted as abusive, she probably feels it was an acceptable uh, approach to discipline because that's what she probably experienced as a child. And that's the case with a lot of folks now, particularly in the older generation. They say, okay, my mom used to do it to me, so ain't nothing wrong with doing it to my kids. Yes, it is. Shouldn't do it. Plaintiff Rukia McMiller says the defendant is her mother, and Rukia claims she used to beat her with her hands and a water hose. Go ahead. Okay, she, she also, used to, she used to beat, like, physically beat me. She beat me up for not washing her clothes Outside in front of, of my the company. hose? Did yes. she ever use her hands yes, on she you? Yes, she did. Okay, I didn't hear much about that growing up. Go ahead. Yeah, she, and I got beat up for not washing her clothes. Um, I had it rough as a kid. I didn't know who my father was until my mid-teen years. Um, he later on, he passed away after we got close. Um, growing up, basically, like, I felt like she played favoritism between me and my sister. She was approved for Section 8. She gave my sister her Section 8, as well as she put hey, my what? sister car under her insurance. Your sister was an adult, obviously. Um, yes, she was. And how old were you? Um, when when she, she gave your sister the Section 8, how old were you? This was a you? couple years ago. Okay. I was later told that she gave her the Section 8. Okay, and you're low income as well? Yes, I am. Okay, so she could have given it to you. Yes, uh, and so we, not, both have, we both have one child apiece. Okay. Our kids are 16 days apart, so I, I feel like she... She Wait a minute. Okay. On that, but you have other instances in the over the years that where she's played f favors clearly. Yes. Okay. In this case, she certainly made a choice that was one-sided that benefited one child when two needed the same thing, but she had to choose and if what you're saying is true. But she's about to tell me. Something. Okay, sir. As far as the Section Eight is concerned, Anita was in my. Anita was in my household. Mm -hmm. Rakia wasn't when I applied for Section 8, and they told me that you can only pass it down to the child that's in your household, not the child that's outside of your household. So that is why I made too much money. So they told me I can pass it down to Anita. That so sounds that's reasonable, why. and it sounds like it's a fair law, because the essence of it is, is when you move, the person that's living with you has no place to go and they were living with you under the tenancy of uh, Section 8. And so that means that they're going to be left needing Section 8 also for that same premise. And then once you're granted Section 8 status, you can take that status and rent wherever the landlord accepts yes. uh, Section 8. So, okay. got that. All right, and you want to address any of the other allegations? She said I want to mm -hmm. address her saying that I was abusive. I did beat Rakia, but it didn't do any good, Your Honor. Rakia was a very disrespectful, vindictive person. Let me some examples of Exa the disrespect, disrespect towards you. Disrespect towards me. me. Rakia, um, Rakia was at my mother's house. and What Rakia age? She was 15, 14, okay. fit, no, 15. Mm -hmm. She was at my mother's house and she had made a cake. And I said, Rakia, can I have a piece of cake? She looked at me. I said, Rakia, can I have a piece of cake? She said, no. I said, oh, she don't really mean that. I got a piece of cake. Rakia smacked that cake out of my hand and it went flying over the place. I, I like, believe, why I don't would believe you that. 
<laughs> you do what? I don't believe that. It, at, she's Miss um, Keep It Did 100. You do that? She'll tell the truth. I was 17 when mm -hmm. that happened. Uh huh. What Even happened? older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happened? Even was more mature. I mm -hmm. had got a cake made. Mm -hmm. She asked me prior to a phone call, she said, Can I have a piece of the cake? I never answered her. I got a phone call. She said, oh, well, such and such just called. I said, well, why didn't you bring me the phone? I had an attitude. So when she asked me again, can she have a piece of the cake? I said, whatever. She said, so what do whatever mean? I said, whatever. So she, she took it upon herself to get a piece of cake. I said, don't eat my cake. She said, and if I do, I said, if you eat my cake, That's I'm going to smack it out your hand. Oh. I... She attempted to eat the cake, and I did smack it out of her I don't know how crazy you sound. Yeah. <laughs> Let me uh, find out anything else you want to tell me about the okay, background well, with she, your daughter. She's very vindictive. She was Something very... had to happen. If she, if she talked to her mother like that and smacked cake out of her hand, she... something had to happen. No, I'm saying she the was... The police would have to come because that is an assault. Anytime you do something maliciously to something that is attached... To a person's hand or body, you've that's an assault. Anything that's well, an extension the, of your body. I didn't call the police on it, Your Honor. Okay, you should have. Next time when you have a 17 year old or even a younger person, uh, this day and age, you just call the police. That's the best you can do. Plaintiff Rukia McMiller says the defendant is her mother, and Rukia claims she used to beat her with her hands and a water hose. All right, let's get to the property you're suing her about. Okay, so um, I was living with my, up under my grandmother. My grandmother owned a two-family home. I've been back and forth to my grandmother's house. In 2013, my grandmother passed away. My mother and my aunt inherited the house. My mother moved into the house. Um, she actually attempted, to, threatened to put me out for unpaid rent. Uh, I didn't have the hot water tank working for three weeks in Buffalo. Um, I paid half of the rent. She wrote up a three-day eviction notice threatening to put me and my son out if I didn't pay the rest of the rent. Um, going forward, I realized that we had a rodent problem, a bad rodent problem. Um, the rats was in the cabinets. They were eating all my food. So in January, uh, my mother called the police on me because she wanted me to go downstairs, and I told her I'm not going downstairs with the rats. She called the police on me. The police officer told her that they can't do anything because I had been staying upstairs in her apartment for more than 90 days. I left the house. I was homeless, back and forth to friends' houses for two months. I got my own house in March. Um, I haven't went Good. back to her house. Good, because I wouldn't have let you stay there in the first place if you did that to me. If you treated me like that as my child... <laughs> just smack something out of my hand and then come try to knock on my door talking about you want to stay there? I said, you better go sleep in the car and if you don't have a car, go sleep on that f ground. You would have never been there. Go ahead. Okay, Talking about so, she's suing you for rent. You wouldn't have walked in the door. So basically, <laughs> um, I've been gone since January, but I moved into homeless? my house in March. She calls you to be homeless? Did she call? No, well, she... Basically, the house cannot get fixed. Mm -hmm. um, the holes that's in the house, it's an older house, mm -hmm. so the house can't get maintained. Mm -hmm. So I moved out. Um, basically, I haven't went back to the home to get my things because I haven't had the money to pay for movers and everything. When did you move out? You said when? Yes, ma'am. I, I left in January, but I didn't get in January of what? Two, 2019. And well, you haven't done, you didn't do what, you're saying? I said I didn't go back to the house. She mm -hmm. never stressed, okay, Rakia, you need to get these things out of this house. She never asked you to she come get them? No. That's not she true, She never sir. asked you to come get them? She's lying, sir. Okay, we can make this case real easy. And she left in January and hadn't, hadn't gotten them now? That's called abandonment. Yes. Do you know when you're getting all your stuff? This is in March of 19. You read it and weep. Judgment, yours is dismissed. Theirs is granted for perjury. Very clear that she said that. Have a good day. I just want her to come and get her stuff, the rest of the stuff that she hasn't gotten out of my house. I want her to come and get it. I don't have anything to say.